Hello, grade 12s. Okay, so we're moving on to a new section, and that is meiosis. So, yes, you guys will have done mitosis as a cell division previously, when we did it in grade 10 for you guys. So, this is now the different version of cell division that we're doing, which is meiosis. So, I've separated this into a couple of videos because it is quite a complex process to understand. It's not as easy as what mitosis was. So I'm going to go through nice and slow, make sure that we get an understanding, make sure that you go through this and that you understand all the different parts and components and terminology related to this. So part one really is going to be just laying down a lot of foundation of terminology before we go a lot more into the phases, the actual phases in part two. So before we go into anything, we know that when we're talking meiosis, we are talking about DNA, we are talking about chromosomes, but we really do sometimes get confused between what is a chromosome, what does it look like, I have these other words like centromere, chromatid, whatever. Let's just solidify our understanding of what we mean by these. So in this picture, what I'm showing you is this is several versions of DNA that I am looking at. So on the left hand side here, this is essentially the nucleus that we're looking at, and then I've got the yellow stuff which is the DNA. This in the middle shows you how the DNA is actually coiled and how we fit so much DNA into a small space, and then I have the shape on the side here being a chromosome. So the way that I want you to think about it, or the way that I like to remember it, is think about a sock. So if I was to ask you now, draw the shape of a sock, you would be able to draw what a sock looks like, what a normal generic sock looks like. But what is a sock made up of? A sock is made up of many individual fibers, like cotton or synthetic or whatever it is, that have been woven together that then come into the shape of a sock for you to wear. But if I was to take one loose strand of that fiber and pull on that and undo the whole sock, like I would pull all the strands out, I would then be left with this mass of fibers that don't really kind of have a shape. It's just like this bundled, tangled mess. And that's kind of what we have to look at in DNA. So when the cell is not dividing, when the cell is in interphase, when it's doing its thing, when it's not needing to be able to divide, it is in the form of chromatin. So the chromatin here is almost like the sock that has been uncoiled. It's just that mass of fibers that just look like a random shape. It looks like spaghetti in a bowl that you could kind of say it's just formless. When it becomes time to divide, then this chromatin starts to condense and become the shape of the chromosome. So as you can see here, you can see these little individual strands that are all woven and tightly coiled around, but they become this characteristic X shape of a chromosome. So remember that when the cell is in interphase, we are looking at chromatin, the uncoiled sock. When it is time to divide, it is the chromosome shape. Now, important to remember, how do I count the number of chromosomes that are present in a cell? Because technically, if you're looking at this chromosome over here, this chromosome has been duplicated. So, let's look at this picture over here. So, I've got two cells here. So, I've got DNA coiled in this one, and I've got DNA coiled in this one. How many chromosomes are present in each of these cells? Well, it's almost like a trick question, because both of them have one chromosome. Confused? I'm sure you are, maybe a little bit. How do I count the number of chromosomes easily? I look for the centromeres. How many centromeres are present within the particular structure? So remember, in a chromosome, the centromere is essentially the thing that holds the long arm and the short arm together. It's like the structural anchor of whatever is happening here. So in this picture over here, what has happened, the characteristic X shape only comes about once the DNA has been replicated. So essentially this has been doubled. So genetically the same. So this side of the chromosome is genetically identical to this side. So the sequence of nucleotides on this side is exactly the same as the nucleotides on this side. When we get this shape, the X shape, we refer to it 
as sister chromatids. So that is where you get the word chromatid. So I have still one chromosome in each one, but in this cell, I have two sister chromatids. And the sister essentially saying that they are related to each other in that they are genetically identical. And the reason that we get chromatids is because replication has occurred. So when replication happens, we get the X. Make sure you remember that. So let's look at us as humans. So we as humans have 46 chromosomes. So depending on whether it's been replicated or not, you will count 46 centromeres. Think of it that way. But the way we also like to think of it is that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. So if I was to take your chromatin right now, non-duplicated, so I haven't copied it, and if I was to coil it and condense it into their chromosome shape, this is what you would find if I was to put them all next to each other. So can you see, if I was to count individual ones, I would get to 46. But what we do is we put similar chromosomes next to each other. So for example, these are both chromosome 1. How do I know that they're both chromosome 1? Well, they are generally roughly the same length as each other. And from a more sort of molecular standpoint, they are both containing the same genes. They code for the same things. But generally, the easiest one to look for is the size thing. You may notice that there's a slight difference down here at pair 23. See, that's X and Y. So these are your sex chromosomes. So in this picture, they are not the same. So I've got a long one and a short one. So I've got an X and a Y. If these were X and X, they would both be the same length. So it's just a slightly special case with the sex chromosomes down here at the bottom. So why do I say that it's 23 pairs? Well, remember, you are a combination of your mother and your father. So you have to inherit an equal set of amount of chromosomes from your mother and your father. So, for example, in this picture, you could say that all the orange chromosomes, individually, all the orange ones, came from your mother in her egg. And all the blue ones came from your father, from that sperm cell. Then combined together, we will create 46 chromosomes. And that is how our body has to function. We have to have 46 chromosomes of which some came from my mother and some came from my father. We have to do this because we do sexual reproduction. We are not able to split ourselves in half, suddenly duplicate, clone ourselves. We have to be able to do it this way. So now the question comes. How did I create a cell that only has one set of this 46 chromosomes? Because essentially, if I was to get half from my mother, I have to get one from each of the set. And that is what meiosis is. Meiosis essentially is then the cell division that creates the half amount. Before I move forward onto that, one little terminology word. When you look at these together, because I call these similar chromosomes because they are same length, having the same genes on them, we refer to them as homologous chromosomes. So remember, there's a difference. Sister chromatids are when I had a duplicated DNA, the same centromere that is connecting them. Homologous chromosomes are the same, essentially, number. They are the same length. They code for the same genes, but they are not connected by a centromere. Homo, again, the scientific prefix for the same. So chromosomes that are the same in function, you could call it that. So what is then the purpose of meiosis in general? It is the creation of genetically different haploid gametes. Okay, a couple of things we need to unpack in this. So genetically different is not the same as what happens in mitosis. Because remember, in mitosis, we want to create genetically identical cells. If you are cloning a skin cell, you want that skin cell to be exactly the same as the original so that it does the function that it's supposed to do. Because if it suddenly starts doing a different function, then that doesn't really help. So we want to make sure that it's genetically the same. In meiosis, we want to be genetically different. We will clarify that in one of the later videos while that's important. Gamete. What do I mean by a gamete? 
So a gamete is a sex cell. So those are your eggs and sperm. So the purpose of meiosis is to create eggs and sperm. Now, what do I mean by haploid? So to understand haploid, we have to understand the difference between diploid and haploid number. So these terms are basically referring to the number of chromosomes in a cell as a sort of brief overview of that. In this picture that we have here, you can see I've got haploid number on one side and diploid number on the other side. So diploid, which is represented by 2n, where n is the number of chromosomes, it's just a variable could, that we use to represent the number of chromosomes. A diploid cell is one that has two copies of each chromosome. So for example, in the previous image that I showed you of where there was the 46, that would be a diploid cell because there was two of each one. So for example, this could be chromosome one and one, this could be chromosome five and five, and this could be chromosome 10 and 10, for example. But there is two of each that are there. A haploid cell is where you only have one copy of each chromosome. So that is represented by N, N being the number of chromosomes. So you can see here, there's only an individual one of each of these. So a diploid cell is referred to as a somatic cell. And another way of understanding a somatic cell is a body cell. Essentially, anything that is not a gamete. Any cell in your body that is not an egg cell or a sperm cell will be a somatic cell because it has two sets of each chromosome because that's what it needs in order to function. Which therefore means that a haploid cell is a gamete. Anything that is a sperm or egg cell will be a haploid cell. So again, the purpose of meiosis is we are wanting to create haploid cells. We want to move from diploid to haploid. So for example, again using the letters here, in humans a haploid cell will have 23 chromosomes in it. N is 23. In a diploid cell, humans will have 2 times 23. 2 pairs of 23. So that would make it 46 in total. So make sure you have a good understanding between the terms that are on this page before we move forward. Okay, just one final consolidation. So in this picture here, I'm showing you when the chromosomes have condensed, when they have coiled. This, these are homologous chromosomes. So for example, call this chromosome one and chromosome one from your mother, from your father, one from each of them. How many chromosomes are in this side? There are two because there are two centromeres that are present here. When we have DNA replication, when I duplicate each of these, when I copy the nucleotide strand exactly as it was, the copy stays attached to the original by the centromere. So these are still homologous chromosomes, the green one and the purple one. But what I have done is I have replicated, I have duplicated. So in this one, these two are sister chromatids because they are both attached to the same centromere. These two are sister chromatids because they are attached to the same centromere. So how many chromosomes are on this side? There are two because there's only two centromeres. How many chromatids are there? There are four because it's one, two, three, four. So that then is there. So there's two homologous chromosomes, but four sister chromatids. Yeah, so make sure you've gone up until that point. You've gone through things. You make sure you have an understanding. Revise, have a read, make sure. Because, so there, two chromosomes with four chromatids. So this is your overview of meiosis. So... This is very basic. We're going to go much more in depth into the next video. It all starts with interphase, as we normally had with mitosis. That's where the cell is replicating its DNA. So you can see here, I'm referring to these two as homologous chromosomes. These two are homologous chromosomes. And now you see, here's the, one of the big differences between meiosis and mitosis. There are two phases 
of mitosis, of meiosis, sorry, meiosis one and meiosis two. So mitosis only had one division, but meiosis one and meiosis two means there is two divisions. So the first division is referred to as reduction division. So what does reduction mean? I'm reducing, I am lowering, I'm making less of. So if you notice in this cell, there are how many chromosomes? There are one, two, three, four, because that's how many centromeres are present. Same as in this cell, one, two, three, four. I know the centromeres are not exactly quite visible, but you get the idea. So there are four in this cell. I want to reduce that. So now in each cell, how many chromosomes have I got in each cell? One, two. And in the other cell, one, two. Okay. But I can't just leave it at that division because why? I've still got the copies of each chromosome that are occurring here. I can't have copies because I'm still going to have too many chromatids in my cell. So I then have to have the second phase, which is meiosis 2, which is copying division. So now I am reducing the number of copies from 2 to 1. So now I've got in this cell, there's one, one, so one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two in each cell, but no copies in the final cells. I know you might be looking and seeing why the colors are a little bit different. We're going to discuss that in our next video, why they're different. So can you see the overview of meiosis? I started here with two full blue, two full red. And what have I now done? I've created four genetically different because the colors have changed. They are not the same as the original. Haploid, half the number. So it's only one copy of each instead of two copy of each. Gametes. So each of these would be, so for example, these are, might be sperm cells. Yeah. So that is your general overview of meiosis. Please make sure that you go through those terminology words. Make sure you have your understanding. Make sure that you know what they mean before we move into the actual phases of meiosis itself. Thanks very much, guys. Hope you enjoy that.